Hello and welcome to the I, your English News Bulletin. I'm Akivito and this is the headlines. Union Home Minister Amit Shah arrived in Shillong today to chair the two day meeting of the Northeastern Council. The Home Minister is also scheduled to chair a meeting with Chief Secretaries and Director General of Police Forces of all the Northeastern states. Mirabai Chanu on Saturday won a silver medal in the women's 49 kg weightlifting competition to open India's medal tally at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. The Manipur athlete lifted a total weight of 202 kg to win the medal. Trials for Bharat Biotech's COVID-19 vaccine co-vaccine on children are underway and results are expected to be released by September, All India Institute of Medical Sciences Director Randeep Guleria informed. And now, the news and details. The worldwide rally for freedom for mandatory lockdowns and restrictions, mandatory vaccination, wearing masks and testing and discrimination based on vaccination status was scheduled to be held at the old MLA junction at Koima on the 24th of July. However, without the prior permission of the Deputy Commissioner, it had to be withheld. The rally is being held on the same day for the same cause in over 100 cities worldwide including Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Jaipur, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Ahmedabad under Awaken India movement. Azato Naga, senior pastor of New Life Church in Koima, said the rally is to be a peaceful event with a prayer march to create awareness about legal rights that mandatory testing and vaccination are not rights constitutionally. The tenets of the Supreme Court are being violated, constitutional rights of the people are being violated and not forgetting even the co-vaccine guidelines which say that vaccination has to be voluntary. But going against all this, the government of Nagaland has made it mandatory, he said. The government order should not affect the daily wage earners, teachers and government employees from earning their livelihood. When it comes to Manipur and Meghalaya, the Guwahati High Court or the Supreme Court, the right to move around and to earn livelihood have been granted, except for Nagaland. Naga said that the state government says without vaccination, movement is not allowed inter district or state. That is why the citizens are carrying out the peaceful rally to bring awareness to the public about their constitutional right. He said further that vaccinations are approved only after research and trials on animals over a period of five to six years, but in this case, the vaccines are being administered to the humans without any animal trials. It was later informed that the memorandum which was supposed to be submitted today will only be done on Monday due to time constraints. Union Home Minister Amit Shah reached Shillong on his two-day trip to the Northeast region on Saturday. The Home Minister was welcomed by Meghalaya Chief Minister Konrad Sangma and other senior ministers. Shah is accompanied by the Minister of State for the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region, Dr. Jitendra Singh, and Minister of Culture and Development of Northeastern Region of India, G. Kishan Reddy. Chief Minister Konrad Sangma last week conducted a meeting of the National Democratic Alliance with the parties of the Northeast Region. Shah's visit was among the key agendas in that meeting. Shah will hold a meeting of all Chief Ministers, Chief Secretaries and DGPs of the Northeastern states, which is expected to take stock of the law and order and COVID-19 situation in the region. An association of 41 clubs in India and the Round Table India Trust under the One More Breath Charity Project donated hospital beds and equipments worth more than 40 lakh to the district hospital of Zuneboto. The inauguration program for this was conducted on July 24th at 10 a.m. in the Zuneboto District Hospital Conference Hall. A contractor and the brain behind the project implementation to Zuneboto's district hospital, Z. Kashto Yeptomi, was the guest of honor of the event. The project was executed by 41 E.R. Samir Jain, Vice Chairman of the 41 India Area 5, H.T. Pankaj Agarwal, Delhi Amigos Roundtable 311, and T.R. Nitesh Barek, Guwahati Progressive Roundtable 238. While speaking at the inauguration program on behalf of the district, Deputy Commissioner of Zuneboto, Peter Lichamo, acknowledged the 41 clubs and Roundtable India for their generosity in donating beds and medical equipments to the district hospital of Zuneboto. He lauded Kashto Yeptomi, who took keen interest in making the goods available and personally requested that the 
project be implemented in district hospital. He highlighted the plight of the district hospital and asked the donors to continue to help the district. Also, he encouraged the doctors, nurses and medical staff on the importance of judiciously utilizing the goods received. He urged the medical superintendent and his colleagues to maintain an inventory to make sure that the goods available in the hospital are put to good use as well as to know the goods that are in shortage. He assured that the goods received will be utilized for the betterment of our district. TR Nitesh Barek, Guwahati Progressive Roundtable 238 said that the vision of one more breath brought by the 41 clubs in association with RTI aims to provide 3,000 beds in hospitals, oxygen concentrators, etc. across the country and transform unused ward spaces to useful care centers in Nagaland hospitals. In his speech, Z. Kashto Yaptomi informed that the 41 clubs of India and RTI are an NGO spread across India and that funding is purely private for charitable works across India. He said that when he came across the news that Dimapur was blessed through the project, he requested his friends to implement the same in Zunubato as the district had been deprived of certain privileges. He also spoke about the importance of taking the vaccination and encouraged the gatherings to have confidence in the district hospital's doctors and nurses and take the opportunity when they are in Zunubato. Further, he reminded about the impending third wave and asked the gathering to stay prepared. The Lothai Eloi Hoho, or Lotha Women's Organization, organized the COVID-19 vaccination-focused publicity and awareness campaign on July 24th at the Lotha Eloi Hoho building with Dr. Zuben Kikon, Deputy Chief Medical Officer of Woka, as the program's resource person. In his address, Dr. Kikon gave a discourse on the importance of COVID-19 vaccination and encouraged the participants to get vaccinated and by refraining from rumors and misinformation. He requested the participants to follow appropriate COVID behavior by following the standard operating procedures stipulated by the government. Colony women leaders of Wokhar Town attended the program. The All India Congress Committee has appointed N. Lokain Singh as the interim president of the Manipur Pradesh Congress. A press release from AICC General Secretary K.C. Venugopal stated to have appointed MLA Nom Rik Pam Lokain Singh as the interim president of the Manipur Pradesh Congress. After Govindas Kanthaujam tendered his resignation, a crisis had broken out within the party. Reports about Kanthaujam, along with some MLAs joining BJP, had been doing the rounds for quite some time. Singh is a five-time MLA from the Nambol Assembly constituency. Party sources said the choice for Lokain Singh as the interim president was being taken up by high command, mainly looking at his low profile. The party is reluctant to appoint high-profile and influential individuals after the bad experience they had with Govindas Kanthaujam. If Kanthaujam joins the BJP, it will be a big blow to the party's image as he held the post of the president. Singh was holding the post of vice president. While addressing a press conference at the Congress Bhavan AICC member, Bhakta Charanda said N. Lokain will be president until a regular president is appointed. However, to question how long Singh will be the president, Charanda said the process has started and it will not take a long time. Trials for Bharat Biotech COVID-19 vaccine, co-vaccine on children are underway and results are expected to be released by September. All India Institute of Medical Sciences Director Randeep Guleria informed. Vaccines for children should come out now because trials in India are already underway for vaccines which are available in India, Guleria told ANI. Bharat Biotech's trial is in the final phase and by September we will have the data, Guleria said. He added that in the coming weeks or by September, vaccines should be available for children. It should then start with schools in a graded manner, as has been done for 18 to 45 years of age, and that also will give more protection to kids and more confidence to the public that children are safe, he said. The trial is being conducted in three phases by segregating children into categories according to their age. The first trial was started in the age group of 12 to 18 years, followed by the age group of 6 to 12. Trials for children between the ages of 2 to 6 years are currently undergoing trials. He said that vaccine manufacturer Zetas Cadilla, which recently requested emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine, Zikov D, has also included the data for children for their vaccine. The government of India has been holding discussions with COVID-19 vaccine manufacturers Moderna and Pfizer for procuring their vaccine. However, there has been a delay over the same. Following the incessant rains across the state, at least 76 people have lost their lives, 
while 38 others have got injured in the floods that ravaged several districts of Maharashtra, including Satara, Raigarh and Kolhapur. In Raigarh alone, six incidents of landslides have been reported since Thursday, claiming the lives of at least 45 people. According to the statement issued by the Chief Minister's Office regarding the situation and damages in Maharashtra, parts of Regat Ratnagiri districts in the coastal Konkan region and Kolhapur district in western Maharashtra have been worse affected by the floods. Besides that, heavy rains have been found in parts of the Satara district. A total of 44 bodies have been recovered from the debris of the Mahat landslide in Maharashtra's Raigat district from two different locations. Updating about the landslide triggered due to incessant rain, the Raigat district collector Nidhi Chowdhury said that 35 people have been injured are under treatment. Total six locations experienced landslides in Raigat district and at one location rescue operation still continues, Raigat DC said. According to officials and staff present at the spot, around 50 more people are feared trapped under the debris, the DC said. The CMO statement said that as per the information received from the Relief and Rehabilitation Department, nearly 90,000 people have been evacuated so far in the state. 75 animals have perished, it added. The National Human Rights Commission has directed the Chief Secretary, Government of NCD Delhi, Secretary, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Land and Development Office, Government of India, DG CPW and Delhi Commissioner of Police, to take appropriate action in a coordinated way to ensure basic human rights of the civilians at INA Market Delhi within six months and submit the final action taken report for further consideration of the Commission. The NHRC in its order also stated that the Commission also noted that the complainant Ratakant Tripathi is a well-organized human rights defender and has been taking up multiple issues concerning violation of human rights with the Commission from time to time. His research work and efforts in awakening, spreading as well as promoting human rights in the public at large has been duly appreciated by the Commission and has brought on record that he has been getting threatening calls from miscreants involved in the matter to the extent that nowadays murders are being done against payment of rupees 500 and has sought for intervention of the Commission for his security and safety, the Commission said. The NHRC directed the Commissioner of Police Delhi to ensure the safety and security of the complainant in the instant manner with submission of action taken report within four weeks. Tripathi, a champion of human rights who remains an unsung hero as of now, in his petition before the NHRC stated despite the Swacha Parat mission scheme and the existence of several apex offices of India like the NHRC, CVC, NCDRC, Ministry of Ayush, DDA and more, in the nearby location of General Pool Office Complex, INA Market, the environment and human rights aspects have not been taken care of by the concerned authorities. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken will arrive in New Delhi late Tuesday to discuss with Indian officials the agenda of expanding our security, defense cyber and counterterrorism cooperation. The State Department said on Friday making it the top U.S. diplomat's first visit to India, an important U.S. ally in Asia. Blinken will depart from Washington on Monday evening and will arrive in New Delhi late Tuesday. On Wednesday, the U.S. top diplomat will meet with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar. Among the subjects on the agenda will be focused on expanding the country's security, defense, cyber and counter-terrorism cooperation, said the Department of State Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs, Acting Assistant Secretary Dean Thompson. Thompson also said the Secretary Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin will look forward to hosting their Indian counterparts in the annual U.S.-India 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue later this year. Indian Ambassador to the United States Taranjit Singh Sandhu will also return to Delhi to participate in the high-level meetings where Afghanistan will remain one of the top focus with Thompson underscoring India's shared commitment to peace and supporting economic development in Afghanistan. The United States sees India as an important partner in efforts to stand up to China's increasingly assertive behavior. Blinken's trip will follow a visit by Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman to China and coincide with one to Southeast Asia by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin.
the ongoing COVID crisis and climate change will also be a part of the talks, he said. The Embassy of India in Afghanistan on Saturday reiterated the June 29th security advisory for Indians nationals in the country in view of escalating violence amid the withdrawal of U.S. military troops. The advisory asks Indians visiting, staying and working in Afghanistan to exercise the utmost caution with regard to their security and avoid all types of non-essential travel in view of a rising number of incidents of violence in various parts of the country. In an advisory, the embassy said the security situation in Afghanistan remains dangerous in certain provinces and that terror groups have carried out a series of complex attacks, including targeting civilians, adding that Indian nationals additionally face a serious threat of abduction. It is recommended that all types of non-essential movements be avoided and movements, especially during peak commuting hours, should also be avoided, it stated. While traveling on roads, maintain distance from possible targets like military convoys, vehicles of government ministries, offices, high-ranking officials, law enforcement agencies, and avoid visiting crowded markets, shopping complexes, mandis, restaurants, and other public places, it said. The advisory said special attention is drawn to members of the Indian media traveling to Afghanistan to cover events through ground reports. As recent tragic events showed, it is essential that all Indian press persons covering events on the ground establish contact with the public affairs and security wing of this embassy for a personalized briefing, including specific advice for the local they are traveling to. The advisory said referring to the recent killing of photojournalist and Pulitzer Prize winner Danish Siddiqui in Afghanistan. This will not only help media persons make a better assessment of the risk involved, but also make it easier for the embassy to render speedy assistance if needed, it said. And in a proud moment for all Indians, Mirabai Chanu created history winning India's first medal of the Tokyo Olympics when she clinched silver in the women's 49 kilogram weightlifting event on Saturday. Chanu thus becomes the second ever Indian female weightlifter after Karnam Maliswari to win an Olympic weightlifting medal. Maliswari had won a bronze at the 2000 Sydney Olympics and thus became the first ever female weightlifter from India to win a medal at the quadrennial event. Chanu took the silver lifting a total of 202 kilograms, 87 kilograms in snatch and 115 kilograms in clean and jerk. She successfully lifted 84 kilograms and 87 kilograms in her first two attempts in snatch category but failed in a final in which she targeted 89 kilograms. Similar story followed in the clean and jerk section that saw her lifting 110 kg and 115 kg in the first two attempts. However, in a final, she couldn't lift 117 kg but by then she had already assured herself of a silver medal. 26-year-old Saiko Mirabai Chanu is the first individual from India to secure a medal. When Hornbill TV reached a village at Nongpok Kakching in Imphal East District, which is about 25 km from Imphal town, her family along with local people were found praying at a local temple for the grand success of their daughter. Chanu is the youngest of six siblings. According to her brother, she started playing from the young age of about 12. Her brother said there is no facility at her locality for weightlifting, so she had to go to Kuman Lampak Stadium, which is approximately 22 kilometers from her home. According to her brother, she waited every day for trucks coming to her locality for sand mining and hop on them in the early morning hours. She often faced problems when returning home as trucks were nowhere to be seen. According to her mother, she struggled a lot when Chanu started playing because of financial problems as they were poor. The family managed with earnings from Chanu's mother, Saikom Tombi, who runs a tea hotel at her locality. Currently, Chanu is an inspector with the Indian Railways. Her mother, Saikom Tombi, is about 58 years of age and her father is about 60 years of age. Manipur Chief Minister N. Birin Singh tweeted, what a day, what a win for India. Mirabai Chanu wins silver in weightlifting women's 49 kilogram category. India opens tally in Tokyo Olympics. You have made the country proud today, he tweeted. And that was all for the eye. For more news and latest updates, stay tuned to Hornbill TV.